what this means for Nigeria's economy? Um, I, I think that the, the, the rhetoric around the economy is a bit overrated. Um, I, I think that, yes, it is an expensive postponement for everyone. Um, but again, this is our third cycle, right, um, of this postponement. So it, the, the truth is, were people overtly disappointed? Yes. But was it unexpected? I don't think so. I think we all knew that the, the elections were not going to go smoothly. All right. Let me, let me get another, another viewpoint on this one. Now, Lushala, can you, can you, do you agree with that? Yeah, I tend to agree, but I want to add another narrative to it. I think there's some reputational risks that are being clinged on to Nigeria's uh, overall country risk. I think that uh, postponing something at the 11th hour is the needle in the haystack. I think uh, there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. So I think we need a lot more probing into the processes of INEC. I think that there are some fundamental issues around project management and the people who run elections. If we are now repeating similar mistakes that were made in the past, when are we going to correct them? All right, Winston? Well, while I do agree that the cost to the overall economy is not, uh, that amount is not as big as, you, as people would like to think, but when you look at the fact that these, uh, these elections were only moved one week, the cost to everyday people who are already being an undue burden when it comes to this economy is just ridiculous. If you think about it, the person that runs the average restaurant, uh, restaurant, hotel, nightclub, event planner, what have you, that person is going to lose two weekends of revenue for a business that only runs two days a week, which is Friday and Saturday. That is unconscionable. All right, then, but I'd, I'd like to now take, it, take the discussion to the ripple effects. You know, it's one thing for that to happen, and you look at one thing. But then when you look at the wider effect, we're seeing flight cancellations happen, happening across the country on those days, and then it's going to happen another, for another weekend as well. We're looking at um, um, decisions by the National Assembly being delayed. You know, we have the budget still, still hanging in there. When you look at all this, the ripple effects as, as it affects, the, uh, affects Nigeria, what, what's, what's your take on it? Let me start again, Femi. Look, I mean, the, the, the ripple effect is real. Um, I, I think the government is also starting to make some pragmatic decisions. So I read in papers this morning, for example, that the airspace is going to be open on Saturday for elections. So look, I, again, I, I always try to remind people that we're, we're, we're babies in this whole democracy thing, right? Um, this is our fifth cycle of unbroken elections. Um, countries like the US have had, you know, 250 years of fine-tuning their systems. Um, the UK probably six, since the 1600s have been having elections. So it's important for us to dimension that. Now, um, there's one very important thing that he said, you know, when he was talking about, is what are the learnings we take from this as a government, as a people? And perhaps there are structural changes that we even need to make in the way the country is being run. Um, so when people talk restructuring, for example, this is actually a strong case for restructuring and saying that, look, let's devolve this government even further down to, to, the, to the local governments, to the state governments, and let's increase the level of accountability that occurs around that um, level of government. And then we can start to see you know, changes. Maybe the 2023 elections, maybe we'll have a one-day postponement. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I know it, it's, it's a serious matter, but we just have to focus on the fact that we, we are still in a democracy, and, and that in itself is something that is worth celebrating. Uh, the trickle-down effect yeah. is, is a, a big problem in Nigeria. I think that now we have delays, further delays. You mentioned the budget. There are decisions that have to be made by investors. There are decisions that have to be made by even ordinary business people, even the artisans you know, uh, that are impacted by this uh, postponement. And I think that the trickle effects, if one could quantify it, I'm sure would be into billions of dollars. Now, we don't know how long these delays will occur uh, in the sense that once you've set something in motion, what else are contingent in those plans? Those haven't been shared. But let's say we're losing a quarter of productivity, really, one quarter of productivity out of which is normally a four quarter financial year. So I think Nigeria has to play a lot of catch it up. And if we continue to delay things, we will slide further below on the GDP uh, okay. line, and especially on our GDP ratio, it will just uh, get worse. No, in a lot of companies have talked about the fact that the 2019 elections, they've been holding back on some financial, final investment mm -hmm. decisions based on, on for Nigeria. You know, Winston, we had a chat not too long ago around FDI's coming into Nigeria. Uh, yes, we did, and it goes back. You, had, you, you said, why is, it, why is Ghana getting more, uh, more, if not as much, as Nigeria is? And this is it. 
Ghana holds the election and he just holds. And if you're that investor that's trying to ask himself, I'm going to Africa for the first time, I'm taking dollar one, I'm leaving home, where do I want to go? Do I want to go to a place where a group of people can stand up, look 180 million people in the eye, six hours before an election and say, no. Or do I want to go to a place that they just do the elections and move forward? If these people do not respect 160 million of their own citizens, how would they respect me? How would, can I make sure that I can enforce my contracts? So I'll be surprised if Nigeria is not dropped down a few spots on the ease of doing business just because of this, then you know that thing is just garbage. Okay. Logistics, 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 which was at the heart of, of, of everything here. When you think about the scale of putting elections together in a country as first as diverse as Nigeria, as wide as Nigeria, over 700 local governments, uh, we're talking about one, uh, 176,000 polling units, units altogether. Do you think this could have been done that easily? Look, it was, it was never an easy task. I, and I, I don't think any of us here is going to try and, you know, um, demystify, you know, the, the, the shared logistic nightmare it is. Um, the, the reality, again, is we, ha we have to understand that the system, we, we, we had a discussion off camera, and when we talked about the government and the politics, the reality is that the government itself, which is the, the civil service, the people who get things done on a daily basis, the system is rigged by these people to ensure that there's inefficiencies in the system. And it is those inefficiencies that create the problems that we have today. Th just think about it. As at, as at Wednesday, we didn't know whether they were, they were River State APC was going to be in the elections or not. As at Wednesday, we didn't know. As at today, we still don't know. So you can, you can understand the, the challenges that even, you know, just the logistic challenges of dealing with those sort of issues. I know there are, there are people who are supposed to you know, who, who don't know whether they're on the ballot. Look at Anugu State. We don't know who the PDP candidate is. Today, I mean, that election will have been on, on March the 2nd. So the reality is that, look, we understand that there are challenges, but we feel that, look, everyone says this. INEC had four years to plan for today. Um, and with the brain power that resides in Nigeria, I mean, like I said to someone over the weekend, we move currency around in this country like every day. You know, and I, it's unusual that you hear that currency has been stolen when it's in transit. How, how can't we move ballot papers, you know, and, and basic things like that? But I, I think it goes back to that question is that how do we restructure the government? We focus on the politics, but it's actually the government that is broken. Okay, so focus on because the government. Because we don't vote for those guys every four months, every four years. Four years. All right, then. We'll um, I'm going to pick up the conversation with you, Olushola, and I'm going to talk about INEX crisis communication. If you were to rate that, you know, how would you rate that on a scale of 1 to 10? Before I rate it, I think that we all agree that communications and messaging is really important. Um, I think that uh, the inability of INEC to have quantified some of the constraints, uh, for instance, the logistics challenges that they had, and then leave it to the 11th hour to actually highlight that to the electorate um, due to, uh, and then postpone the elections really scores it a low, I would say a 4 out of 10. Um, I think that uh, uh, some, something has been suggested that there's been some interference, you know, um, and until you get to the root cause, these symptoms will occur again, you know, so typically if planes can't fly in bad weather, then you use the roads, but you start going on the roads much earlier than you would take uh, a flight to a certain destination. Okay, Winston, when you look at the fact that sensitive materials are out there, they're trying to retrieve all these materials and get in there, do you think this process has compromised the elections in any way? Well, it depends. So now, I'll take them at, I'll take them at face value that this was simply logistics. So let's assume that nobody's trying to muck around with the process. If you're trying to retrieve all these materials to get them back out in time for Saturday, then we've decided that we're not going to be, we're not going to vote on Saturday again, because it took us four years to fail one Saturday. No, but I think the retrieval is just to the central bank in each of the states. It's just the central bank yes, in each so of the states. Just state. returning them to the central bank. Central bank. bank. Okay. You know, I, I, at this point, my thought process would I would have assumed that if you are canceling it, that it never left the central bank, because if not, that means all these things had left the regional central bank and had gone out. So at that point, they were already they, if there was any. If anybody was going to muck around with it, that's already happened. But at this point, we can't go back. At this point, we can't go back. What we just need, what they just need to do is, they have to find a way to 
to at this point convince us. Mm. And I don't know how they're going to do it, but they have to find a way to convince us that whatever result they give us at the end of the day is the will of the people. Because I'm, I'm still looking at the logistics here because I think there's, it's a lot for one week. It's one hand, you are retrieving this material back to the central bank. There's still re refresher training happening with, with third party um, employees for the, for the INEC. They're going to reconfigure the, vo uh, the, 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 the machine, the card readers all as well. And I'm thinking even in all of this, you're still going to do the same logistics of moving the new material around well, Nigeria. Look, I, 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 think, I think that, look, we, w as we came these guys, we also should give them a bit of, um, okay. of some, some, some room to, to fix their issues. I, I think clearly that we would have very good elections on Saturday. I, 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 I believe that we will. Um, don't also forget that it's become more difficult to muck around with our elections. Um, if, you, if you look at what happened in Oshun, for example, it, even though the parties were disputing who won the elections and all of that, the results were out there. Everybody had a picture of those results, you know. So it's it's becoming more difficult for people to just the, the sort of of wanton rigging we had in 2007. You know, it, it's not it's not as it's not as easy today. Um, again, because of votes, vo there's more voter awareness. There's a lot more people. I mean, we have mobile phones. We take pictures when those guys sign those from EC8 mm -hmm. or whatever it is. So it's going to be a lot more difficult. However, one of the things that I'm expecting would happen is that by Thursday, we'll start to see what the body language is, even from INEX perspective and from the political parties as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I think that that would give us an indication. Yeah, interesting you mentioned that, because let me talk to the, teleco the telecoms person here, technology and all of this. Yeah. You know, how can tele technology make this process better? Why are we still using well, this method? Well, I, I think that uh, you, you've made a good point. Uh, the PVC card readers is a good technology, um, but you know that any system can be hacked. You know, there's no perfect system. So you still have the Russians. It's, uh, you still have the Russians or you have the Nigerians who ha are vendors mm -hmm. and then there's rumors that they were uploading results already preloaded. Pre I mean that shouldn't happen and where you have virtual polling uh, stations that shouldn't be on the system. So you have a server and you have these devices that are like mobile devices okay. and the technology is already there but then it comes down to the people and the processes and who is monitoring and controlling and ensuring the integrity of the data. So there's that aspect. And I think that finally, on the logistics, uh, especially bad weather, I think there's some rudimentary things. I mean, we're starting to introduce certain trains to certain destinations. You should use trains as freights, or you yeah. should use even um, guarded vehicles, you know, and yeah. they start earlier. Well, it kind and of fits the, the lack the, the Yeah, the and finally, in terms of adopting a technology, I agree. I think that paper backup is still needed in oh, Nigeria because yeah. we have power issues and we have connectivity issues but there has to be some um, level of confidence that the technology will improve in okay. the nearest future and that we can adapt and change the law to accommodate improved technology okay. to reduce uh, 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 issues of tampering or of concern no, to sure. remove the trust. So, so let me just add one thing to this. Yeah. We have taken INEC, the, uh, INEC and That's the business. government to task <laughs> on what they've done. But I will give them a pass on this. Two elections, the last two elections were delayed. And after those elections were delayed, we finished the process, went through. Nobody ever came back and said, here is a postmortem of all the things that went wrong. So this guy is starting out without knowing what were the failures of the last two elections and what are the things that were done to solve it. Nobody gave that to him. So let him do this for us. When he is done with his elections, he should have a postmortem put together a clear report on the things that went wrong and the things that should be done to make sure that the next person who comes into that seat at least has the benefit of his experience so maybe that guy can deliver for Absolutely. us. To sort out some of those logistics yes. challenges especially. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys have been a wonderful uh, get wonderful on the show today. I've been speaking to Femi Olade. He's a partner, an, invest, an investment bank in at Agential Capital Partners and Ulusho Olaten the president of the Association of Telecommunication Companies of Nigeria and Winston Osuchuku, the co-founder for Trans Sahara Incorporated. And that's a wrap on Power Launch West Africa for today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. But remember, you can, all join, you can, watch, you can join all of our conversations online on Twitter at CNBC Africa. You can also tweet at me, at Kenneth Ibama. Don't forget to use the hashtag PLWA410 when you do so.